Hi friends! If you missed my last video or saw it but had no desire to watch me ramble for 10 minutes, I am joining the Foundations Revealed competition this year with a design and costume of the Dark Fairy from the book Reckless. If you happen to not know what Foundations Revealed is or want to know more about the competition, you can watch my last video. Or if you really don't want to do that, you could Google it because presumably since you're here watching this video, you have internet capabilities. Anyway, the Dark Fairy. This video is going to be me making a colored design sketch and talking through my design choices and the materials I intend to use. Right now I'm going to share with you some quotes from the book that directly reference her appearance. Without another word, she undid the pearl clasp with which she pinned her hair like a human woman and brushed her hand through it. Black moths fluttered out from between her fingers, the pale spots on their wings looked like skulls. Then the little moths go and spy for her, which is just so cool. Okay, here's another. The fairy smoothed the velvet of her dress, six fingers on each hand, each one for a different curse. I am going to try so hard to make her a fake sixth finger. I've been toying with a few different ways on how to make that happen. I've been watching some videos, but I haven't settled on one specific way yet, so we'll see. And the last that I'm really referencing is from a much larger paragraph, so I'm going to skip a few parts. Camions, that's the king, mistress, was wearing green, as usual. Layers of emerald velvet, elm, um, emerald. <laughs> was wearing green as usual, layers of emerald velvet that enveloped her like the petals of a flower. And I'm skipping a little. Her beauty was like a spider's venom. And skipping some more. The dark fairy, the darkest of them all. So she is a pretty evil lady. While this section does specifically say emerald green, I am going to use some other shades of green because I am on a super tight budget and those are the fabrics that I have in my stash. The rest that it directly says she looks like, I am going to try and pull that and use it very specifically. And I'm also going to try and pull inspiration from the imagery I get just when reading about her character. So since this is a fantasy world and she is a fairy, I'm going to lean pretty heavily into fantasy elements. But in the book, the fantasy world is attached to our world through a mirror portal. And at one point, the main character makes a reference to how the technology from our world is very slowly bleeding into their world and being incorporated there. Just very far removed time-wise from when it was starting to be utilized here. So I'm going to apply that concept of the belated bleed through to fashion as well. And I'm going to try and use that to incorporate some historical elements into the design. So let's get started. Here we have the original design sketch. It's got her six fingers and her little skull moths. This is the very first sketch where I learned of the competition and just threw something down on the page. Overall, it's very anachronistic and disjointed. I knew I wanted structure and contrasting textures and historical elements, but I did that here without thought to cohesion. This is the second more refined sketch. It's a bit more ragged, but overall more thought through. The historical elements are at least from the same century, and the fantasy elements all have purpose and reason instead of just existing purely for aesthetic. Here I am starting with a new sketch that I am going to use to explain the separate elements and pieces, and I will also color this one to reflect the fabrics I'm planning on using from my stash. I am very new to sketching like this, so you'll have to bear with my lack of talent, or not. If you hate it a lot, you could always go and watch a different video, but here we go. I started by sketching the stays, even though that isn't the base layer of this costume, because quite honestly, that's what was easiest. I want these to feel very regal, but also very rigid. And I'm basing the shape on an extent from the VNA, but I'll be taking quite a few liberties from that extent anyway. Mm -hmm. 
Once again, I am skipping over the base layer of the shift because I am a scaredy cat who can't draw arms. We are moving on to the petticoat-ish thing. I intend to make this as a strong contrast to the expensive look of the stays. So I'm going to paint and distress the fabric and then cut and distress the hem and just make it ragged. These will tie like 18th century shifts where you secure the back panel around your front and then the front panel goes over that and ties around the back. But instead of pleating it like an 18th century petticoat, I'm going to gather the panels. Um, I think pleats look very clean and that's the opposite of the look I'm going for here. Again, ignoring the shift exists, okay. From the beginning, I knew I wanted hip structure. Uh, to balance the giant mothy headpiece I was picturing, but I was just all over the place on how to make that happen. Once I decided to really lean into the historical and fantasy blend and learn more about 18th century fashion, pocket hoops seemed the perfect way to do that while keeping my timeline cohesive and providing sharpness and stark lines that I think will really add to this illusion of evilness in the character. Finally, the shift. Please don't laugh at how much I cannot draw arms. Anyway, I'm going to make the shift out of cheesecloth. I wanted something sheer that would show skin while still having a layer under the stays, but a lot of the sheer fabrics I considered were just too pristine. I figured that cheesecloth is such a loose weave and rustic looking to begin with that it will be very easy to distress and corrupt. I almost want to make it look moth-eaten to reference her little spies. I really want there to be a dichotomy between her tattered undergarment layers and the structured, more fashionable and ornate top layers to show how in the beginning of the book she's presented as this regal king's mistress and very in control, but we end up seeing that that's a facade over her natural and vengeful fairy powers. So I want to blend our first perception of her and our final perception of her into this one look, while also keeping it clear that these are separate elements to her character. Next is her armor. I really struggled with the shape of this, but ultimately decided to keep going with the moth references and shape them after stylized moth wings. I want this to be very rigid and imposing, while also incorporating some of the softer shapes of the wings. So I'm going to try and extend the armor from her neck all the way past her shoulders to feel like it's almost confining her at the neck, while also having that visual of extending down her arms and creating her own wings. This next piece I sketched is one I am the least sure about including. I'm usually a more is more kind of person when it comes to design, but I'm really trying to work on refining my designs and I can't decide if this is just a bit too much more. This would be a half length overskirt to contrast the under petticoat shown before. So it would be made out of a more luxurious fabric like velvet and pleated instead of gathered for crisp lines. I'll make the final decision about including this piece or not once I've seen the rest of the look come together to get an idea if it feels complete without it. And if it does, I just won't make it. Last over the body is a cape that will attach to the armor. This was the very first piece I pictured for this character. Just a long, trailing, heavy, imposing green velvet cape. Something about that image just screamed the dark fairy to me. Now for the fun part, coloring. For the stays, I am going to use this olive green brocade. These were originally curtains that I had gotten at the thrift store to make a pseudo renaissance gown years ago. Definitely polyester, but aesthetically pleasing polyester. The petticoat will also be polyester thrift store curtains from my stash. 
these are white right now with a wrinkly kind of texture. I am going to try and paint them to look almost like moss and I definitely want to keep that texture. Apparently I didn't record painting much else, but the cape will be made from, you guessed it, a thrift store curtain. The armor will be fake leather scraps from a musical I worked on a few years ago and some thrifted purses. Honestly, I'm really bad at telling if leather is real or not, so I have no idea if the purses are fake or real leather. And we gotta make sure our picture is all pretty. The pocket hoops will be bias tape and heavy duty zip ties that I'll weave in some sticks to kind of reference the headpiece. And the headpiece will probably be all new materials because honestly, I don't even have a plan for that yet. So everything else is coming from my stash, but I don't know what I'm doing about that yet. The overskirt, if I include it, will be this gorgeous pear-colored velvet gifted to me from my lovely friend and the model for this project, Catherine. And here she is in all of her very green, very evil, and very badly sketched glory. I am so excited for this project and the design I've created, and I hope that I'm able to make it happen the way I'm envisioning it. I have never tried to tackle a project of this magnitude, so we'll see how it goes. I will post progress videos as I have time to edit them, and I hope you all enjoy. If you are also entering, I wish you the best of luck and cannot wait to see your designs. Bye friends!